So the chronic myeloproliferative disorders are a collection of different diseases that have two things in common. One, they are all chronic diseases. And two, they all involve excess proliferation of cells of the myeloid lineage. All in all, there are four major disorders within the chronic myeloproliferative disorders. And these include polycythemia vera, essential thrombocytemia, myelofibrosis, and CML. And of these four, CML is the only one that features the Philadelphia chromosome. JAK2 mutations are also common for the myeloproliferative disorders, with only CML not having an associated JAK2 mutation. When thinking about the myeloproliferative disorders, think about what happens to each individual cell line, whether that be the red blood cells, the white blood cells, or the platelets. So for polycythemia vera, would you expect the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets to be increased, decreased, or remain the same? Well, polycythemia essentially means elevated hematocrit, and polycythemia vera is actually an increase in all myeloid cell lines. So you'd actually see an increase across the board. That'd be the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. Now, there are two types of polycythemia. You can have a primary polycythemia, which is due to a somatic gene mutation, like here in polycythemia vera, or a secondary polycythemia, which is due to some other driving force, like excess erythropoietin. A pathognomonic finding for someone with polycythemia vera is that they present with generalized pruritus or itching all over after they get out of a hot shower. Treatment here is via therapeutic phlebotomy, hydroxyurea, and ruxolitinib, which is a JAK1 and 2 inhibitor. All right, so what would you expect to see in essential thrombocythemia? Well, here you would actually see a selective increase in the platelets, hence the name. However, a rather strange aspect of this disease is that even though the platelet count is high, you can present with either bleeding or clotting. Bleeding in this case is because the platelets are fairly non-functional, even though they are present in very large numbers. So how about myelofibrosis? What would you expect to see? Well, myelofibrosis will show a decrease in the red blood cells, and depending on the extent of involvement, you may or may not see the white blood cells and the platelets involved. The pathognomonic finding here is the teardrop cell on peripheral smear. And you can remember this by thinking about the bone marrow crying because it's fibrosed. You may also see immature cells on the myeloid line as they are forced out of the bone marrow too early because of the fibrosis. And last of all, we have CML. Here we'll see an increase in the white blood cells as well as the platelets, but a decrease in the red blood cells. And remember, this is the Philadelphia chromosome positive or the 922 translocation. And as we mentioned earlier, the JAK2 mutation is common in the chronic myeloproliferative disorders. It's important to know that the JAK2 signal transduction pathway actually controls hematopoietic growth factor signaling. So it makes sense that messing with this pathway will alter the number of blood cell groups. JAK2 mutations are always present in polycythemia vera, and this is due to a somatic mutation, meaning that it is not inherited. And for essential thrombocythemia and myelofibrosis, you see a JAK2 mutation about 30 to 50% of the time.